Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of The Seditionists. Keith Reeves here from Arlington, Virginia, communicating with my good pal, good friend, and fellow fired up revolutionary today, Dr. Robert Furman. Uh, and we have to, we don't want to, we must discuss the testimony offered by the president-elect's candidate for Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. We've got some notes to scaffold this conversation. We, we, let me preface by saying this, and I actually thought about saying this earlier today. Rob and I work here in the YouTube world as private citizens and do not espouse any values of any school system or employer. That having been said, we are professional educators with a career worth of bringing issues to the fore, and we have to talk about this. Because if you watched it, we have to talk about this. <laughs> So let's start. We've already covered a whole episode on school choice and how Rob and I feel about both Ms. DeVos's positions and the record of uh, the literature, what that says about choice. So we heard a couple of things. We've got what we already know, what we learned, what we didn't learn, and one good thing. I've got some notes. So what we already know was that she is hugely in favor of the expansion of charter schools and vouchers and that she is in fact in favor of utilizing American tax dollars to pay for religious education. Rob? <laughs> wow, that's a heck of a start there. Uh, yeah. yeah and, and, and obviously, like you said, we've gone over this. Um, the, it, it's just my fear, as it's been since the first day we've even started this, is that they can they can make these statements and and there's like no facts to support anything. Uh, we saw it through the Trump campaign, and we're obviously going to now see it through his constituents and his groups that you know we can show you point blank that these things aren't going to work. But yet, here we are. Um, here we are. It's 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 interesting and scary. Uh, you know taxpayers for for these for you know public education she she was quoted as saying that she would not cut for public education but then she turned around and 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 when she was asked if she would commit funding to public education she wouldn't answer the question um so you know where, where do you go from here i don't know it was a crazy crazy morning to, to listen to that and feel what was going on um I don't want to get into the school choice thing. We've done that. I'll I'll I'll, I'll put a link to it in here. Uh, you know, I, and and I guess that's part of my frustration too. Is it feels like we're doing the whole beating the dead horse thing. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we've already gone over that this is ridiculous. It's like, but yet now here's the the, the most powerful person in education saying that this is that this could be a good thing. Uh, just just an, atro an atrocity, man. Go ahead. It absolutely is. It's anti-academic. I think that's the phrase I used before. I mean, I, I, you're, you hit the nail on the head. There's a reason that people spend lifetimes researching what works in schools. This could be, as Aaron Sorkin wrote, it can be the silver bullet. This could be, we could fix everything through education. If we can increase the um, uh, educational opportunities for women globally, for minorities in this country, if we can fix the problems that we have with, you know, misguiding people into inappropriate situations, constantly feeding the, the school to prison pipeline, if we can fix this, we might be able to fix everything. This is too serious a, a, a kind of work to trust to people who stumble into it. It's far too serious to trust to people who simply don't believe what the evidence clearly shows it true it is true. It's like being a flat earther, you know, like you can have that belief. You're an idiot. Like we, we you can't be a serious thinking person and think those things. Right. And, and we by all appearances, Ms. DeVos is absolutely categorically willing to fly in the face of things we know beyond a shadow of a doubt to be true based on bipartisan titanic research. If that's your starting position, how can you possibly aspire to be the highest teacher in the land? It's, it's, it, it strikes me as nuts. Like, you can you can be a person who believes that the earth is flat. I just really don't want you to be the head of NASA. I mean, seriously, if, the, if that's your personal belief and you want to espouse your nut job views in your own private home, that's fine. This is academia. This isn't your belief. This isn't your church, which to cycle back to that for a moment. There's a reason you have to have secular schools. If you don't, you're Iran. 
Okay, you can't have non-secular schools as the basis of your education. This is not to say that a person, and I often have to clarify this position as I did in the book, this is not to say that people who attend religious schools can't receive the things that they need from science and a proper education while layering on some moral component over the top of it. But A, it cannot be a serious default position. Sorkin wrote extensively uh, this terrific line about, no, you shouldn't teach um, religion alongside a science curriculum like intelligent design, they're based in two different things. One of them is based in uh, replicatable empirical observed fact, and one of them based in faith. One can, compl- and, and I, I'm regardless of one's religious perspectives, you can have those two things run concurrently, but when you conflate them to be the same thing, you create anti-science. And we can't have that and have serious discussions as academics. People can have their belief in the tooth fairy. That's fine. We can't do things like that. We can't teach Santa Claus in second grade. We can't teach that the earth is flat in third grade. You can't do that. It's anti-academic. Right. I completely agree. Um, one other comment that, that just blew, blew me away, um, and, and, and this is one of those issues that we get a little chuckle out of it when she said it because I don't think anybody believed that she actually stated this in, in, a, in a Senate congressional hearing, whatever you would call this. Um, yeah. But yet she did. And if there's any parents out there that have any voice at all to, to deal with this particular issue, this is one that frightens me as a parent, as a principal. Um, her her views on guns and school. Oh, my God. That Because that... In today's day and age, this, just that statement alone should negate her from being able to be in this position because she obviously has no idea of the dangers that are going on in our world right now. When, when her idea is it's okay to have guns in school just in case the random grizzly bear decides to, to come into the school. That Which she is, literally said, folks. <laughs> that's what she said. Here comes the grizzly bear. And you shoot it. In, in an elementary school, I mean, how can you be, again, the, how can you be the head of education in the entire country and have that belief is just beyond, beyond recollection right now? Um, I, I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah, the, there are three items that we learned that we hadn't heard before. There's guns in schools assessment and not knowing IDEA, IDEA uh, the Individual Disabilities and Education Act. Or the ADA. Let's. Or the 80, absolutely, with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Let's start with guns in, in schools, as Rob brought up. Every statistic you could possibly find, every serious scholar of this subject will tell you, you hide, you lock the door. Period. I mean, the insanity of suggesting that firearms in, 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 in this situation explicitly, I'll keep all other opinions about this subject to myself, but to suggest that that is an evidence-based, seriously academic, proper, appropriate, law enforcement supported, security expert supported idea is insane. And to like having guns in schools to begin with, but if her perspective on the conditions in schools and the issues facing school security in this country, which people like you and I who went through the Columbine era take very seriously, people like you and I who couldn't sleep after Sandy Hook take very seriously, for her to have so idiotic, so staggeringly idiotic a response as there might be grizzly bears. I feel like I'm in an alternative reality. The president-elect has said some things that just kind of take you aback. Now we're looking at what's going to happen in the in the in the um, cabinet. This is Rob's and my field for a person to suggest that we need to arm ourselves against bears. It's comic, except for the fact that you're talking about putting a deadly implement around little children and potentially putting it in the hands of the untrained. It's lunacy. It's scary. It's truly just like Wild West scary. And and, what, yeah. and and again, what blows my mind is if there was like a principal that said that or a superintendent that said that, you go, oh, my gosh, that, that poor school district. This is the person who's going to be in charge of education for the entire country, the United right. States, who's saying these things. She know, This is no longer just an advocate, whoever she was before. Now she is in charge of 
everything with education and these are her viewpoints people if we don't get out there and make a scream about this we, we we owe it to our kids to do something this is getting serious very very serious she did not know that the americans with disabilities act was that was a federal law she doesn't understand no, special education rules how are we going to have a leader who doesn't know the basics the things that you learn as, as i'm assuming she was never a teacher never an educator we no. learned those things no, in college. she never She's never gone to a public school. She's never taught in a public school. She's never led a public school. She said she has friends that have, and she said she volunteered at a school. Then bake some brownies, but get out of our profession. The suggestion that having all these decisions made at the local jurisdictional level, the, the, the reason this Grizzlies thing came up, for those of you who didn't see the testimony, is it was a question about seeding local control and the elimination of safe schools. It is an expectation that you will have gun-free zones in schools that accept federal money. And she's basically like, well, we should leave that up to local jurisdictions. There is a time and place for local control. I don't have beliefs sociopolitically that are strictly aligned with any major party I, I, to say the least those of you who know me me um, as well right but yeah but there are there are critical issues that that descend or that transcend party stuff and you don't see the local control over things like oh you can um you know eliminate stairs and put in fire poles instead and so like it's there are certain you have to keep kids safe you're the highest teacher in the land and espousing that position was really terrifying to those of us because it leads directly into what rob said if you believe that things like special education decisions should be left up to local jurisdictions if you believe that disabilities decisions to help children our most vulnerable students should be left up to local jurisdictions local jurisdictions jurisdictions being led by school boards who don't have to have any educational experience either, you're taking the ability to keep these kids safe in environments where they could legislate into politics the needs of children. You're, they're putting those kids at massive, massive risk. One of the other uh, uh, components that she seemed not to have any clue about, she didn't understand anything about IDEA, she didn't understand anything about ADA, and when presented with a discussion, a debate that has been raging in education for 35 or 40 years, the difference between do we, when we have systems of accountability, do we measure by proficiency or do we measure by growth, she had, you could look at her mind, didn't have a clue what Senator Franken was talking about. Didn't have a clue what the difference between them was. She was just using these terms like, wait for it, what's the word? A lay person. Are you kidding me? It's, it's, it's staggering how, how inept and, and incompetent she is for this particular role. Um, yep. This, two things. One, as the highest teacher in the land, I think I can safely say that that she came into this hearing uh, ill prepared, and she didn't do her terribly ill prepared. Yeah, she yeah. Didn't whoever her was homework. her crib team, they should fire all them. She didn't know the difference between proficiency and growth, and didn't mention Common Core. Talk about the current debate. Where was her prep on all this? There was nothing. So you know, as the person who's going to be in charge of education, I wouldn't want my students to look at that and say that's how you prepare for 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 a debate, for a discussion, for a hearing. That is pretty much the antithesis of everything we want our kids to be able to do when they're defending a position. Um, Absolutely. And, and in terms of 21st century skills, we talk a lot about the importance of being able to you know, come up with a thought, defend your thought, debate your thought, and. Um, Maybe she's a product of No Child Left Behind because there was nothing, nothing there in terms of debate and discussion. <laughs> you know, she certainly seems it. We've gotten – she had such – unbelievably naive, unbelievably simple. And I, I hope everybody understands, we're not calling Betsy DeVos names here. We're referring to her skills as applies to this job. And when it comes to public education, she is demonstrably ignorant. She is demonstrably unqualified. She is demonstrably naive. Are these negative things? Yes, but this isn't nasty name calling. This isn't some partisan assault. This is terrifying to people like Rob and I who strive every day to make headway in these fields 
And now you have somebody being put up on a pedestal as as the leader of our profession, whether we like it that way or not, the leader of our profession with the most staggering ineptitude, the most staggering inability to conceive and relate to even the most fundamental and some of the largest scale debates and issues facing our profession today. If you don't have even the most basic finger on the pulse of children with disabilities, children with special learning needs, children who have been failed by the system, which she thinks she has a finger on but obviously doesn't because she isn't looking at any of her special ed law. She doesn't understand assessment. She doesn't have anything to say about major curriculum. Apparently, What are you talking about? That This is a person who no would be seriously about considered safe as a schools. joke. No, clearly none at all. To the contrary, seems entirely willing to jeopardize the safety of children in every school in America. You know, the one thing that came out of this that was like, okay, is she did specifically address that not every kid needs to go to college. There's been the national obsession with this pre-K 16 continuum where every kid has to go to undergrad. We've we've really gotten away from a core understanding of the power of vocational education. And I'm I'm appreciative to hear that. I've wanted to hear that from people regardless of their community. Um, my hometown of Syracuse, New York, has a very strong tradition. Um, part of the Montessori program was developed where we are, so we're into experiential learning. Um, but we built one of the you know nation's foremost vocational high schools in 1918. We we have some idea about that. But bad policy and bad systems lead to the collapses of systems like Syracuse, that is now one of the worst small city public education systems in the country. It is not going to get fixed. And that's why I look at this through these lenses. Rob and I have seen failing schools. We've seen schools in trouble. There is not a thing she said that makes me think she's going to do anything other than make it worse. And that is absolutely terrifying and depressing to people like us. A absolutely. And and the um, with all of that we've just said, you know, I've got two, two things I would like to give out to our audience. One, if you have a feeling contrary to what we're saying, please leave us a comment because this is our this is our opinion and we, we certainly hold true to it true. Uh, however I think we've got a lot of uh, a lot of backing on what we're saying um, but if you disagree we always want to hear from you uh, because we want to be educated maybe there's something that we're missing you know we want to know and it's not because of it being Betsy DeVos or Donald Trump or anything like that we're educators right. and we want to know that our educational system is going to be safe and it's going to be run by a quality leader and right now Keith and I are both in agreement that we don't see that and that's not and that's our biggest it. and that's our biggest fear. Uh, the second thing is parents, teachers, you've got to use your voice. Your voice has got to be heard on this because without that, then then sort of no news is good news. So if if we're not out there shouting from the rooftops that this is entirely and utterly unacceptable, then they're going to assume everything's okay and they're going to continue on with, with, with business as usual. Your voice has to be heard. Use it in social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever the case may be. There are power, There you have power in your voice. You've got to use it. You've got to get out there. Ask people to watch our video. Get their opinions back in here. We will be all means, by all means we would be a sounding board for this but at the end of the day your voice has to be heard if you agree with us because something is going to go horribly wrong in education if we let this continue keith wrap us up buddy it's absolutely true you know i had it and i'd be interested to hear if any of our listeners have anything to say on this one of the pe questions i get asked at the end of my you know well, what do you think about betsy devos well who would you put forward keith who would you pick to be se uh, to secretary of education i'd love to hear some people's suggestions who would i put up i want a guy like jesse hagopian you know somebody who understands social justice issues somebody who can donald trump's never going to put a guy who shares my radical beliefs in a position like that but he could have picked somebody like diane Rav she was originally a Republican. She served in the HW administration. She's published author on this. She studied with Lawrence Kremen. Why not pick some centrist like that? If you're going to have somebody in the position, she, she could speak to both sides of the House. If you have other suggestions as to who you think might be a better candidate for a Secretary of Education, we'd be interested to hear that, too. I hope everybody, again, understands to reinforce one last time. We're sitting here sharing our opinions. We're coming at this from our professions. You don't see us having a channel in which we're talking about, I don't know, how to, how to police local communities in urban centers in the Midwest. That's not our field of expertise. 
but education is, and we have something to say on this. If you have other opinions, we'd be interested to hear them, but we, I think both Rob and I, speak for yourself here, Rob, really felt compelled that we had to talk about this. This is a nuclear bomb dropped right in the middle of our profession. Absolutely. We really had an obligation. Yeah. So we'd be interested to hear your comments, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. This is Keith Reeves signing off. Dr. Rob Furman up at uh, up in the, the frigid north by comparison right now, it sounds like. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we wouldn't be seditionists if we didn't attack this particular issue. So join us in True the fight. True enough. Thank you.